Hello, welcome to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal here on Tuesday morning. So today we're going to talk a little bit about things you put in food and in your life. You know, when you go and have a steak, sometimes you want to sprinkle a little, of, okay, what kind of spice are we going to put on that? Or we're going to have some seafood. I'm going to put a different type of spice. So where do these spices and combinations come from and why do we pair certain types of foods with certain types of spices? And what does it mean as a woman to be a woman of spice? Aha, there is the link we have today and we are going to dive straight into that with our wonderful guest, full of spices, a perhaps of quite a spicy person herself. Let's introduce her now, Brittany from Marna Maria Spices. Welcome. Hi, thank you very much having me. It's really nice to be here. Thank you. First of all, let me just tell everyone how I bumped into Brittany. I went to the uh, farmer's market in Kaka. Ward, right? Yeah, Kaka. 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 And I was looking at her wonderful spices, and I love to cook and try new spices. So that's how it all happened. But it just, more importantly, was quite interesting um, how a person brings about the spice of life, if you will, and um, where it brought you. So let's hear a little bit about your background and where you're from and why you brought this spice to the table. Yeah, no, I um, I moved to Hawaii initially when I was a little kid. My dad was in the military, and so I grew up here, but my mom is Cuban, and my dad is kind of more European, and so my house... Kind of more European. <laughs> Can you be a little more specific? <laughs> well, he, he just grew up in a... He, he's Caucasian, but his family is very influenced by Europe. They like to travel there a lot. Okay. And so I grew up in a household that was really mixed, because we were living in Hawaii, which has a lot of Asian influences, right. but I had Hispanic influences from my mom yeah. and European influences from my dad, and so it was just a house that was always filled with new things and trying new things and new flavors and just bringing different cultures into the house all the time. And um, that was something that my, my parents really kind of instilled in me. My grandparents were both like that as well. Okay. Um, they thought it was just really important to try new things and taste new things. And they also, they were very much in the kitchen and creating their own dishes? Yeah, actually that's kind of where the name for my company came from, Marna Maria. Uh -huh. So Marna is the name of my dad's mom. And okay. she didn't love to cook, but she thought it was important and she wanted to do something fun with her kids and also teach her kids about the world because it was important that they knew things. So Where was she from? She was from, I don't know, Somewhere Washington here. State. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, she was right. from, but her husband and she was also in the military, so they traveled. All right. And so she thought it was important that her kids knew about other cultures. So today we're going to learn about China and we're going to listen to some Chinese music oh, and we're going to wow. eat some Chinese food and try Chinese things just so they knew. That's great. And my mom's mom, Maria, was Cuban, and food was so central to her life because that's a very Hispanic thing, and she thought it was so important to cook, and that's how you brought family around the table, and that's how you bring people together. Yes. And so I love that idea, and that's kind of what I brought together to create my brand, Marta Maria, and then the spices behind it. So trying to encourage people to explore new things they maybe haven't done right. before and try new things they haven't tried yes. before, but through something that's really easy and something that you do every day, like eating. Right. Right. So, but you personally, do you feel like you're more um, influenced by the Cuban culture? Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely have a really big influence of Cuban culture in my life. My mom is Cuban and my mom raised me like she, Okay. and so that was something that she kind of instilled in us. From is there a Cuban community here in Hawaii at all? <laughs> Not really. It's you. You can come <laughs> to our house. We have, there's, every once in a while we'll meet another Cuban and it's very, uh -huh. very exciting. Uh, <laughs> But um, there's a little bit here, but um, not so much because it right. is really far from yeah. Cuba. Right, um, so you bring it. And that's why you were saying off air is also the importance of holding on to your culture because you're so far away from it. Yeah, my mom is originally from Cuba, and then yeah. she um, came to the United States and then was living in Florida, and then through the military, my family came here when I was a little kid. Right. But she would maintain that kind of the values of Cuban culture and the, the fun things and the dancing, but also the food yes. and the family. What are some foods that we need to know about that are, <laughs> you know, just... Yeah, so actually that was the first spice blend that I made. It's called carne criolla, okay. and it's to make that roasted Cuban pork. Perhaps you've mm. had it on the sandwich. It's a slow roasted Cuban pork yes. and citrus juices. And so that was the first blend that I made just to share with my friends because uh -huh. people always wanted to try Which one is Cuban that? food. Ooh. Oh, we have a big <laughs> so here. Okay, we'll find it later. <laughs> it's in here, but it's a, it has some oregano and citrus juices and some onions and garlic and cumin. And a lot of people think that um, Cuban food is really spicy because the people are so spicy, but right. it's an island of sugar, so they tend to oh. be sweeter. Yeah. I got to backtrack. That 
island of spices and spicy people. Why is it that Cubans are associated with being spicy? And do you think that the concept of being spicy is only um, relevant to women? Because you know, you don't say to a hot guy, oh, he's so spicy. But when we're a girl, you see, they go, oh, yeah. Well, OK, Zuri begs to differ. <laughs> we'll ask her later. I don't know. I think what's really fun about the Cuban culture is something that I've really appreciated is that they just like to have fun. Yeah. And you know, there's not these inhibitions of that's not what we should do or this is not kind of what's cool or anything, but it's it's like a deep love for your family, a deep love for the people around you and no like shame to show it and just to express how you want to be and what you love and to share that. So to be spicy is associated with somebody who is carefree and very, very comfortable with expressing themselves and full of passion. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say carefree so much because I mean, one, one really big attribute of Cuban culture is they're very hardworking and okay. so but very driven, but also like totally know how to have a good time and then like, I don't know, just let loose, yeah. But is spicy necessarily hot? Like or is in it just flavor? Spices? <laughs> yeah, you know, when something, somebody's spicy, is it, is it that? What makes somebody spicy? I don't know. I think it's just, I, so I lived in France for a while and it's just that je ne sais quoi. Okay. Like, you don't know what that is, but yeah. some people you just feel have it. that you kind of it. fire inside right. of them that right. drive, like my mom, for example, she's always defended what we wanted to do and defended us just with this passion from inside of her. And yeah. I don't think that's something you teach. And that's something that she's instilled with me that went really well with helping me start this company is nothing was too hard or nothing was too big or you could really do what you wanted as long as you thought you could do it. Do you think this attitude is something that's innate in particularly Cuban culture or every culture has their own kind of version of spiciness? Oh, I don't know. I can't speak to other cultures so much. Well, but you know, your grandmother yeah. said, you know, like yeah. in the Chinese food lessons. It was really quite interesting. That. I, I think that, yeah, I think what's really interesting was when you, I've lived in a bunch of places and when you kind of look at all different people and where they come from, everyone has a different thing that they're kind of really good at, just yes. that that's what's really important to their society. And I think it's so cool when you have a group of people coming from all different places, yeah, like Hawaii sure. coming together, you have all these different attributes right. that are awesome, and then you get a product at the end, which is just I really know. great. Do you have a Hawaiian spice? Yeah, I actually have a whole Hawaiian line. Oh, cause, okay. Um, Hawaii is like so close to me because this is where I live. Right, you like, grew up here. Sure. Yeah, so I do. I have six or seven different kind of spices that are just Hawaii flavors. What are Hawaii flavors? So one that, these were kind of suggestions that people gave to me. So one was for stir fry. Okay. Because that's something the that Asian. kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. happens here. So I have some ginger, like some peppers, a little, and so a little bit of spice in that. But then I also have a little sweet thing. So I have like an everything seasoning that has some ginger, but some sugar as well to like um, pull on some other attributes. Do you make these spices yourself or you get them from all different? So I source the spices from across the world. I try to look where they originally come from. Okay. Like if cinnamon originally comes from Sri Lanka, I source it from there. Okay. Um, and then sure. I bring them all together here and do all the cutting and blending and mixing. And right. Yeah. Right. Testing and everything here. Testing. So who's your guinea pig? <laughs> Everyone <laughs> around me. <laughs> your family. You go, so try this one. Does this one feel Yeah. Good? So it, it's been a pretty fun thing. So wow. Yeah. And I really like the idea that, you know, we're, we're combining the culture, the influence of a culture into a spice. You don't, you know, we take it for granted. We have, there's so many blends out there on the shelves that you just go, okay, I need something for seafood. And then they take that. But you don't think about the source, the origin of it, and why that is. Oh, yeah. So, so many things come from behind that. And I've lived in a bunch of different places. And because of that, I have friends from a lot of different places. So I've had a lot of fun, like, hey, I want to make an Indian seasoning. So I'll call up my friend from India and be like, Tanaz, can you try this? Like, is this right? Is right. this, like, really true to what you guys have there? <laughs> and because that's really my intent, is to do a good representation of what's authentic. And, like, well, that's a good question, though. Where do you kind of cross the line? Do you want something that's authentic? Or do you want something that's blended that represents the multiculturalism that we live in today? Well, I I think like this, for example, is a, a box full of essentially all different countries. So they're all together right. here, but you're you're having different separate things. And one of the things that I like to say is your favorite fruit is one you've never tried before. Ooh. And so maybe hmm. you think you don't like something, but maybe it's because you haven't tried it before. Right. And so just because you might think, it, oh, you know, I'm not really into that culture. I don't really like that. It may not be true. You just haven't experienced it in a way yeah. that you can connect with. It's an and ignorance, that, too, yeah. to something. But it, it's just, it's, it's that. But it's also, I mean, we can't know everything right now. But if this can help someone kind of learn a little bit further than where they are and have more enjoyment in their life because they've discovered that they didn't 
yeah. enjoy something sure. before. I think that's so exciting. And to learn a culture so. from a spice or a flavor. Do you have any particular flavors that you've discovered in your life that was like, whoa, this is something I had no idea <laughs> was out there? Um, I've had a few of those kind of moments where they're on just like small things where I'm like, oh, I really, I, I don't like fennel. I, I'm really not a fan of fennel. And then either, you have it prepared in right? a different way and you're like, Fennel is the <laughs> best ingredient. Okay, so what do you put fennel in? I've had, so I was eating at a restaurant in Seattle and yeah. I had a fennel foam, fennel foam <laughs> on hamachi. So I, don't, I didn't like raw fish and I didn't like fennel. Was it fresh or uh, it dried was, fennel? It, it was, uh, so they had infused the fennel into like a cream and then oh, put wow. it into like a foam. So it was very pungent of the fennel, right. but very smooth from the cream. Huh. And to this day, this was one of the most favorite things yeah. I've ever eaten. Wow. And so... You can transform things to, you just have to look at things in a different way. Yeah. And I think that can be applied to lots of different... Well, I'm going to sidetrack here. I don't know if this is even appropriate, but, um, you know, there is a site where they have all this cooking, these these um, meals prepared, but they infuse it with things that have to do with the source of marijuana. Have you seen that show before? I have not. And then they make it like a whole gourmet thing, and then they, they, they do these special smoking techniques with that. And then there's just so many layers of different types of, um, of pot, if you will. And Rob's like, oh, yeah, okay, I know that show. So, you know, I'm just saying that, Right now, everybody has like a, it's just brought up to a level where we can use our influences in whatever our life, whatever that means, to make it into a very cultural or interesting creative experience in eating. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's true in a lot of things. Like you, if you wrap something up in a certain way, you can really convince people of whatever you want. <laughs> okay, that's another angle on it. Do you have a favorite spice? Um, from my from my thing. Yeah, I mean, you have so general. many spices here. This is crazy. I don't even know where yeah. to like, start. Well, it's you know people just Florida come up fish. to me with an idea, and I say let's try it. Um, huh. Yeah, that one is actually one of the most popular ones. Really, the fish seasoning, as opposed to like a normal fish. I think I bought a fish seasoning last time, but it didn't say Florida fish. It was maybe so that the only reason that one's called Florida fish is it was initially a wedding favor for my cousin's wedding, and she was getting married in Florida, and so that's why I named it that. Oh. But it's. Is it's, there a different thing in it? It's that, great on fish that are yeah. from the Florida coast, but right. it's also great on lots of fish. It has some lemon, it has some dill and parsley and a little bit of pepper. Right. It's really nice. We've had that. What other things do you often. think that are interesting to bring? To French. Well, French always, yeah. Yeah, the French herbs are great because that's kind of the heart of, uh, people will disagree with the French, and I semi-agree, claim that's kind of where cooking started. If you look at wine as well, all wine kind of rules are based off of French wine rules. Okay. And so I think it's so crucial to have such a base as a French because they're classically it's, trained and, yeah. So. And that combination of herbs for a yeah, lot of Yeah, and they've been things. doing it for years and years and years. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to challenge that, but, you know, I'm going to, we'll see. But lamp well you know what i think is sometimes you know since we're going on with the concept of women being women of spices is that what's a man of spice are there certain herbs that you think are more associated with a man and and a woman oh per se? well i would say yes just because i'll get people i sell at the farmer's market yeah and so you have kind of some guys who will show They'll up do the and rub. they're like i'm gonna buy yeah, a lamb rub <laughs> rub like they like the chicken rub the steak rub okay. the barbecue rub those are easy and the um, hot spicy cajun spice right? yeah exactly you know what <laughs> hold on to those thoughts we're gonna come back after that and think about what spices you like in your life and whether you are a woman or a man of spice because it is it kind of identifies who you are or where you come from and when we come back the mom's gonna come and join us too so we'll have more spice on the table See you soon. Aloha, my name is Justine Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. on ThemeTech, we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. We like to bring in folks from the whole realm of the local food supply and agriculture, anyone working on these issues, any organization or individual that has plans or projects. What kind of people have we had on? Uh, so we've had farmers, we've had chefs, we've had people from government, uh, larger institutions, everyone who's working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So you can see us every Thursday and join the conversation on Twitter, and we hope to see you there. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, exploring the world we live in, recognizing the changes around us, and looking into the future of our lives together in these islands. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. 
Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Hello, welcome back to the Women of Spice. Today, it's talking about the spices of life and how women are spicy and how spices represent who we are as women and men. So we have Brittany here from her beautiful source of um, creative spices and her mom's joining us right now. Milda, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So Milda, I understand that you're originally from Cuba mm -hmm. and you came here and uh, let's talk a little bit about the Cuban uh, culture because sure. in, in Hawaii, it's actually not Right. Um, I immigrated in 1967 in wow. the Freedom Flights, the Kennedy Freedom Flights, and uh, we come from a very hardworking family. Cuban cultures, um, Cubans are very hardworking people, and like many immigrants, they want the best for their kids. And um, I think uh, what you need to know about Cuban culture is that um, we're very family-oriented, we're faithful people, and um, you were talking about spice before, and. I think the thing that makes us really spicy is that we really love our family, we love our friends, and we love getting together and eating good food. And so um, when Brittany started this, she started with the, with the Cuban uh, spice, and um, I think it just took off from there. You found the Cuban spice? Yes, yes. yes. Oh. One of our favorites, carne criolla. Ooh, <laughs> and what is in that wonderful name? Yeah, so this is, I base it just on how I tr my mom taught me growing up how we make our traditional fu foods, so our, so our traditional Cuban pork. So it's tons of oregano, tons of garlic, onion, cumin, and then some citrus flavors. So this has some dried orange, some dried lemon, and you can also do some dried grape. I put some dried grapefruit in there Ooh. sometimes. But yeah, and then we'll marinate that down just for up to like, you can do it to like three days, and then you just oh, roast really? that in the oven, and the smell, you can smell for it. For any kind of meat? We do pork. But you Mostly can do like a pork shoulder. You can of? do chicken. You can do anything with you it. But steak. Cubans tend to um, eat a lot of pork, and right. we marinate it usually with this type of spice, and also some um, lemon juice and fresh orange juice, and um, mm. garlic and such. So and it's so. a slow bake, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you it's almost it like Kahlua pork. Right. But, um, we also have. We also put it um, under the ground. We we do Ooh. that in a pit, or we do it on. Uh, um, you know, just o over the ground, and we'll have a pig roasting, yeah. and um, that's very traditional. We're and you just peel it apart, yes. and the juices yes. come out. Yes, it's oh. just a little different in where the Hawaiians uh, have the smoke and the salt. We tend right. to have garlic and other spices. But isn't that interesting? It is. We're paralleling the uh, different cultures, but the similarities. Yes. And, and we do the rice and... Well, it's very funny as well you, yeah, because you eat it there were a lot of Chinese immigrants to Cuba. Right. So if you really look into it, there are some kind of right. connections. Yes. We One, rice every day. Cubans eat rice <laughs> really? every day. Yes, yeah. white rice. And we, we also have, um, which is very big for us, is the black beans. So we do rice, black beans, and plantains. Oh, and, yeah, oh, I love plantains. Yeah. And then your protein. Right, so. right. <laughs> so, but do you bring that over? Because I have a very good Mexican friend uh -huh. who I met in Hong Kong, and her mother, who is from Mexico, would just swear by having the authentic ingredients that she would hand deliver to her. Uh -huh. She would refuse this for her to uh -huh. buy store-bought pre-packed spices. Do you we've, feel the same way about it? We've definitely done that. <laughs> we've done that. I have a Cuban pot. So many things. I have, a, I have a lot of Cuban things and also we have a, a Spanish market here in oh. Hawaii. Um, uh, How authentic is that? Mercado, Mercado de la Raza on uh, Baratania, I believe, and we do go there for a lot of ingredients. Yeah, she brings in a lot of good things, but yes. before that, like, because as I was saying, we go to Florida every year, uh -huh. we would you bring just, back, like, like, what? What would you bring back? <laughs> like, that pots, you can't get here? Mops, pots. like, sort of, like, well. uh, Yes, I mean, I would bring guava. My my daughter just brought me pastries, um, you know, pastries. guava pastries, Cuban pastries. You keep guava here. Uh, like, uh, well, it's different. different. It's a guava paste. It's we, a guava oh, paste that you have what, for dessert. Do you have that here? No, we bring uh, Cuban bread. Oh. Bread. We bring the Cuban bakeries do all these different oh. things. We so. bring what like is a Cuban pastry. Uh, the delicious. It's uh, a lot of it is um, like cakes and very much like French pastries almost. They're yeah. very similar to French pastries. Oh. And uh, they have a lot of that milfoy, right, the right. little papery yes, stuff yes. With, with different jams inside. Was that influenced by the French or it was just the I Cuban? Don't, I don't I believe know. so. I'm not sure about that, but. Um, 
We you like our sugar. You should like a little southern accent come out there. Where did that come from? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I grew up, uh, when we immigrated, we immigrated to New York, and then I grew up in South Florida. Okay, so. okay. But isn't that interesting? You trace, because you said you traveled all over the world uh -huh. for whatever reasons, and how, how does that put an extra spice onto your plate? <laughs> oh, so much, right? Because yes. you, you have such an influence from people you've met or things right. you've tried. And so you kind of, like, she just had her little accent come out. Like, <laughs> you have who you are, but then there's these little things that you've also learned that you kind of add. So right. You, you're, I guess, more spicy in a way. Because Your boyfriend says you're a spicy woman, right? Yes, he does. <laughs> Do you think Brittany's does. a spicy woman? What does that mean? She is. She's got a lot of energy. She's very smart. She has a lot of energy. She can go nonstop and... Uh, I think that's infectious and people like that. They know that she's very knowledgeable and she knows a lot about many things and especially food and cooking because she, um, she has her, her master's um, in food and wine right. and from France. But obviously the <laughs> family, the home was the biggest influence you were talking about Yeah, before, I mean, so. that was what built the foundation. Right. Because I, I mean... Your interests. That was kind of what my parents influenced on me, like, go do what you want to do. There's so many things out there. Go learn them. When, and you, so, when you were very young, you started going in the kitchen and cooking? Yeah, I've day. always cooked with my mom ever okay. since I was little. Well, so. my mother cooked, and my, my aunts cooked. Everybody cooked. Right. And my sister's a big cook. And Do uh, men cook in Cuban culture? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The men do cook, and they're great cooks. Right. And, uh, everybody cooks. Yeah. <laughs> my father everybody was a great eats. cook. Um, my mother was a good cook, a great cook. And... Um, she grew up in a household that that cooked. I cooked all the time. I made breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and my kids. You right, know, and you just grow up in that. You, you yeah, just I, breathe in. <laughs> it's like because that's what brings the family together. And she right. was talking about that. You're talking about passion and passion yes. for family and defending a family, and that's kind of where it all starts from. Because you right. are really close knit. It's very organic that you you fight for your family, or you defend your family, or you're with your family, and yeah. you want to be It reminds things. me of a good film. Would you have a favorite <laughs> cook food film? <laughs> a favorite? You love that show, the Which movie one? Chef. I love Chef because yes. um, Chef is very, it is authentic. It's very human, it's, too. It yeah, it's, out it's, the issues. it's pretty authentic. A lot of times I see films that represent um, Cuban culture, not so much, but it's. I really enjoyed that show, yeah. and the food was right on, and okay. so I was excited yeah. about that. Right. Um, but, you know, it's interesting about food, though. Um, do you think that the foods, the spices that you personally like um, reflect who you are? Can we trace it like that in terms of personality and, you know, just I think traits? so because I think that, um, you know, my husband grew up in a totally different household than yeah. I did. And when we were, you know, first together, he's like, well, how many people in your family? And even though there are only four, there were only four people in our family when I was growing up, um, you know, I said, you know, my, you know, I said there's like 25 people because I'm so used to having the large family, right. very much of the culture. And he was like, what? You know, he was just about, uh, you know, his family was right. a small knit family. So I think, you know, I, we grew up very much with that feeling. With an abundance. That abundance, of right. And everything. the food and So family. I'm sure your plate was full of <laughs> the worst thing you can run into is not having enough food for yes. the people around That's you. like the Chinese. You yes, always have very to put much. more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, you know, like Chinese culture is so broad. People think, oh, what are the things that Chinese eat? Um, it depends. If you're in the South, you eat, you know, they're more steamed uh, foods. But if you're in the middle, you eat more spicy foods. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like culturally you needed to be educated on how the environment influenced your choices of foods, right? So going back to Cuban culture is the citrus. I don't know, maybe because you needed to offset the spices, uh, you know. Yeah, I think I think you can determine kind of almost how adventurous you are, how spicy you are on some, on some level by kind of what you eat. Like, are you willing to try new things? Or are you kind of just really happy with what you're having? And it doesn't, it's not right or wrong one way, but you know, I'm like, go, 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 yeah, we have to try this, we have to do this. And I think that's one of the reasons that my boyfriend thinks I'm spicy is because I'm always like, You're, I've never had that before. Like, we have to have that. Do you make him try Oh, he eats anything. Like, okay. he's totally, he loves it. Because he's, he's a, he loves to eat. He's so. a great guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> and he's really kind because he's always like, this is amazing. So well, see, that's, that's the passion there, too. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the saying, you are what you eat, is that something that's overrated or do you believe that? Oh, I, I mean, I, I think there's definitely exceptions to that. But, yeah, I mean, like I was just saying, like, 
I eat lots of things. I like to do lots of things. Like that's very descriptive of me as a person and my personality. And so I think that totally reflects that. Right, yeah. right. And and people who have simple diets, not because of health reasons, but people who prefer simple mm -hmm. things, maybe they do kind of simplify their lives. With yeah, and, and there's nothing wrong mean, with right, that. Right, exactly. I was just I, all, say. It's just like there's very some people like to go out and do lots of things, and other people are so happy, you know, chilling with a book, yeah. and that is like that is right, their thing. Right. And that's that's not a bad thing at all. It's just different preferences. And right. I mean, not everyone's into spices and not everyone's into travel. But I think That's a lot of people are, they just don't know how to. Yeah, and that was what I was trying to do with this, is make kind of big things small, literally smaller, right. and like more accessible. Yes. Like, I can't go to India, but I can spend 15 minutes, and that was kind of this, was to give people a 15-minute immersion experience. Yeah. So I can spend 15 minutes, I can go on her website, I can read the blurb about India, I can read the recipe, I can make the recipe with her spices, and I've had a semi-authentic kind of journey to this right. place that I've never been. And that was what I wanted to do for people and that not everyone has the ability to travel or can't or doesn't want to do right. that whole thing because that is a big thing. Yeah. But this is an easy way to kind of expand where you are. And it's a culture in a pot. I mean, you really it's exactly put your what it is. Yeah. resource. I it's think the people that have come back to buy her spices all say the same thing, that it's they're good because they're so fresh and also that they make cooking so easy. So someone who right. doesn't know how to cook yeah. um, can just um, put the spices on, follow the recipe, and yeah. it's really simple. And don't go to Costco for the same old blends. <laughs> you know, you get something that's just a little bit more Just look at the particular. colors. Yeah. Ah, the different okay. colors will tell you, will tell everything. So give us, in the last minute of the show, what are some tips that you can give uh, our audiences on how to embrace spices as we should? Yeah, I think like I was, I like to cook a lot yeah. and I would always kind of disregard seasoning blends because I'm like, I don't need that. I can add all the ingredients myself. But really, this is a way to add tons of flavor at one time. So it's, mm. and the, the ingredients are like incredible quality. They're like, I have a spreadsheet this long Rainbow just trying salt. to source wow. the best thing. Yeah. And so it's great for kind of the novice who doesn't want to cook and who just wants to yeah, add because right. it makes you look like, Amazing, <laughs> yeah. And then it's great for people who like to cook or chefs. I've had a lot of chefs come back to me because the ingredients oh, great. are great and a lot of thought and time and yeah. like research has been put into making these blends. So they're like really what people would use. So it's, it goes across the spectrum and it's right. really accessible and a quality product no matter who you are. Yeah. And can people purchase them online or they go to your farmer's yep. market? Everything's counters. available online. We mm -hmm. have different packaging sizes and a few more options online on marnamaria.com. Mm -hmm. And then as well, I sell in the Kakaako Farmer's Market on Saturdays near Ward Warehouse. And then also these are available in Magnolia at um, oh. Kahala Mall. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, you heard it from Brittany and Nilda. So thank you so much thank for you. sharing yeah, your you wealth of us. spices. You had a little in the beginning. What was the quote you used? I want to end. Oh, up what was it? Well, I can't remember. Oh, taste, taste trying to eat. You know, trying to eat the world. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Try to eat the world. So take that with you today and have a wonderful day and eat and be spicy. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.